Thank you. The next item of business is a stage one debate on motion 23672 in the name of Bill Kidd and Scottish Parliamentary Standards, Sexual Harassment and Complaints Process Bill. Can I can invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the press to speak buttons now and if you're remote uh, to enter it into the chat box. And I call on Bill Kidd to speak to and move the motion. Mr Kidd, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Now, back in September, the Parliament agreed to the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee's proposal for a committee bill which would allow the Commissioner for Ethical Standards in, in Public Life in Scotland to investigate complaints of past sexual harassment made about members of the Parliament in respect to behaviour towards members of their own staff. And the bill also removes the default timeline or time limit, beg your pardon, for making complaints to the Commissioner and removes any requirement for the complainer's signature. The bill and its accompanying documents were introduced on the 13th of November and I am very happy to be here in the Chamber today to invite the Parliament to agree to the bill's general principles. The bill is the result of work initiated by the Parliament in 2017 to address sexual harassment after press reports that there were issues which needed to be addressed within public institutions. Since then, a series of changes have been made to the Code of Conduct for MSPs with the aim of ensuring that MSPs, MSP staff and parliamentary staff who experience sexual harassment <clears throat> can be assured that their complaint will be investigated independently and in confidence. A joint working group on sexual harassment was established by the Parliament in February 2018. It was made up of representatives from all parties, as well as senior members of parliamentary staff and a representative from the organisation Engender. The Joint Working Group reported in December 2018 and made a series of recommendations. And following a consultation on those recommendations, its report was referred by the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body to my committee, the SPPA, to implement the recommendations relating to the standards regime in the Parliament. The committee considered the joint working group's recommendations before consulting with all MSPs on proposed revisions to the Code of Conduct to implement two of the working group's key recommendations. These recommendations were no time limit should be applied to complaints of sexual harassment and Members should be held to account for their behaviour towards their own staff in the same way as their behaviour towards anyone else working in the building. The Joint Working Group also wished to see consistency of approach to all investigations of allegations of sexual harassment by MSP. fail to reach a resolution, could they then be referred to the Commissioner? The Code changes also introduced a standard of conduct for MSPs towards their own staff for the first time. The new standard agreed by the Parliament prohibits MSPs from behaving in a manner towards their own staff that includes bullying, harassment, including sexual harassment, or any other inappropriate behaviour. Although clearly never acceptable or lawful, sexual misconduct by an MSP towards his or her own staff was explicitly prohibited by the Code of Conduct from that moment forward. However, this bill is needed so that complaints can be made about historic conduct by MSPs, including former MSPs, towards their own staff members. This is because the Act governing the remit of the Standards Commissioner only allows her to investigate breaches of a relevant provision of the Code of Conduct. Standing orders or of legislation relating to members' interests in place at the time of the alleged misconduct. The Joint Working Group also specifically recommended the removal of an extra barrier to the bringing forward of complaints which are made more than a year after the complainer becomes aware of the misconduct. The committee believes that this measure should be applied to complaints of any breaches, not just those relating to sexual harassment, so that all complaints are on an equal footing. Now, back in September, I outlined the committee's consultation with political parties, MSPs, MSP staff, those who responded to the committee's 2018 inquiry, and anyone else with an interest to respond to its proposals. The responses are published on the committee's webpage. 
and Zero, zero Tolerance told us that sexual harassment in the workplace is both a cause and a consequence of women's inequality. They recommended that the Parliament should make sanctions clear and visible, and there should be a trusted single focal point for reporting this type of misconduct. The Scottish Women's Rights Centre spoke with survivors of sexual harassment in the workplace before submitting evidence, and they underlined the importance of an avenue for victims to pursue free from the fear of repercussions. This bill removes some of the barriers to complaining about sexual misconduct by MSPs and places its survivors on a more equal footing if they decide to take that step. I would like to thank the Finance and Constitution Committee for their report on the Bill's financial memorandum and note that that committee had no comment to make on it. I move the motion in my name and thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Kidd. Now Colin Graham, date open for the Scottish Government. Minister, please. So, um, I uh, welcome the opportunity to take part in this debate. Uh, however, as was the case when Parliament considered the proposals for this Bill, I will keep my contribution short to provide members with more time to have their say. Parliament agreed to the committee's bill proposal without the vision, and I have no reason to believe the outcome will, or indeed should, be any different today. The government's stance on sexual harassment is well known, as is that of this Parliament. That message was sent out loud and clear back in September, and of course remains the same today. Sexual harassment or abuse of any form, whether in the workplace, in the home, or in society is reprehensible and cannot be tolerated. The Parliament has already established many new measures to tackle head-on any accusations that might unfortunately arise. The Committee's Bill seeks to deliver the remainder of the recommendations by the Joint Working Group. The content of the Bill is very much a matter for the Parliament. However, I consider it important for Parliament to complete the implementation of the measures the Group saw fit to recommend. The Government supported the Committee's inquiry into sexual harassment and inappropriate behaviour, behaviour in the Scottish Parliament. The work of the Committee and of Parliament in general reflects everyone's right to work and live their life free of abuse, harassment and intimidation. I commend that activity and very much welcome the strong emphasis on ensuring rules and practices are fair, sensitive and supportive. That is an essential feature of an entity at the centre of Scottish democracy. The committee bill was shaped by the committee's inquiry into sexual harassment and the recommendation of the Parliament's joint working group, as we've heard. The government is supportive of the proposed changes to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner Act 2002 to allow for investigation of historical complaints, to remove extra requirements for the investigation of older complaints in general, and the committee's own proposal for removing the requirement for complaints and complaint withdrawals to be signed. Although not a matter for the bill itself, I thank the committee for confirming that it would consider the need for changes to the MSP Code of Conduct to ensure that any new arrangements would cover Scottish Government officials as well as MSP staff and staff of the Parliamentary Service. Sign officer, the Government welcomes and is supportive of the committee's bill and I look forward to hearing the views of other members. Thank you very much, Minister. And I call Jamie Halker Johnson to open the Conservatives. Mr. Halker Johnson, please. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. It's been some time now since the committee started looking into improving the Parliament's processes around sexual harassment. Since then, a great deal of water has flowed under the bridge, and institutions in Scotland and across the UK and around much of the world have looked at how to strengthen safeguards and how best to recognise, investigate, and handle historic accusations of wrongdoing. Out of the committee's deliberations, the need for this bill has been clear. One of the central roles of the Standards Committee since devolution has been protecting the reputation of this parliament, ensuring that it's transparent, fair, and takes seriously its wider responsibilities to society. I think we all appreciate how important that is to our work, and more importantly, to ensuring that we have a representative parliament that can be respected. Just as importantly, we are all committed to ensuring that victims of improper behaviour are justly represented. The Joint Working Group's report was published two years ago this month, informed by extensive engagement across the Parliament. It is from these recommendations that the core of this bill has emerged. Many of its other proposals have already been implemented and absorbed into the working practices of the Parliament. And as our convener, Bill Kidd, 
mentioned at the proposal stage in September. This was the last piece of the jigsaw of dealing with the working group's rec recommendations. These recommendations are a package and a good one, but they will not be the last word. Because if this process has taught us anything, it's that work to improve the Parliament as a place to engage with, a place to work, must be ongoing. I don't intend to dwell long on the contents of the bill itself. They've been well covered at the proposal stage and in other speeches. And bringing issues around treatment of a member's own staff under the remit of the Commissioner to investigate is appropriate. It reflects what we should have already assumed was part of the role and requirements of being an MSP, to treat people, including our own staff, with the respect they deserve. Presiding officer within this parliament, and when working outside of it, elected members have a duty to hold themselves to a high standard of conduct. This is not only what our constituents would expect, but also recognises that our actions reflect on the parliament as an institution. This bill will improve things, but it must not be seen as the end of the process. If we are to meet the standards expected of us, we must ensure that every complaint is dealt with just, justly, that no improper behaviour goes unacknowledged on the basis of process alone. I'm pleased to support the bill and pleased by the significant work that the committee, the joint working group and others have taken to lead us to this stage. And I thank them all for their efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halker Johnson. I now call on Neil Finlay to open for Labour. Mr. Finlay, please. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. Uh, it goes without saying that sexist behaviour and sexual harassment, or indeed any bigoted and abusive behaviour, does not belong in our national parliament or anywhere else in our representative democracy. E equality is supposed to be one of the parliament's founding principles, and on the mace at the front of the chamber is inscribed the words that we all know wisdom, justice, compassion. And importantly, integrity. Every person, no matter where they work or who they work for, has the right to be uh, the right to work in an environment that promotes respect and fairness, equality and dignity, and en enables them to make the best the contribution they can to the work they do. As a trade union member, all my work in life, these principles are important. Indeed, the advances we have made over the centuries from ending serfdom, slavery and bonded labour, winning advances in health and safety, welfare, equal pay, pensions, a minimum wage and legislation and equality. These equalities, these were all won by brave people and organisations refusing to accept the status quo, challenging powerful individuals and institutions and forcing change. Prog progress like that was never and never will be won by the benevolence of those who hold power, and so it is with this Parliament. This bill comes because we've been forced to change by brave people coming forward. When the sexual harassment survey was issued to just over 1,600 people, there was a response rate of 62%, with 81% and 76% of parliamentary and MSP staff responding. And, you know, we might take some comfort that 78% said they'd never experienced any sexual harassment or sexist behaviour. But it is dreadful that 20% had. That's over 300 people have experienced such behaviour while working in our parliament that we uh, often think is a place with some moral superiority over other parliaments or other, other institutions. 30% of women responded, 60, and 6% 6 of men reported experiencing this behaviour in some form. And the survey also showed that while knowledge of different reporting procedures was high, the percentage of those actually losing them, using them was low. And crucially, those who had experienced such behaviour were the least likely to have confidence in the reporting process. That does not paint this parliament in a very good light. So we have some it seems some revisions of the Code of Conduct, so that complaints under the Code about an MSP's treatment of a member of the Parliament staff or an MSP's treatment of a member of staff of another member can now be directly made to the Commissioner. MSP's own staff are now included in order to give effect to the recommendation of the Joint Working Group that such complaints should be dealt with under the Code. This means that Parliament will be able to hold members to account for their behaviour uh, towards their own staff in the same way as their behaviour towards anyone else. That is a very good thing. Whilst the changes to the code 
placed uh, the parties who experienced misconduct by an MSP on an equal footing. It does not address complaints about historical misconduct towards the MSP's own staff, and that's where the bill comes in, amending the 2002 Act to allow the Commissioner to investigate complaints about past instances of alleged sexual harassment by MSPs towards their own staff. This is achieved by adjusting what is treated as a relevant provision for the purposes of the Commissioner's investigations under the 2002 Act. The expansion of what is to be deemed a relevant provision will only apply to complaints of sexual harassment and not to other forms of misconduct. This means this change means that complaints about MSPs' treatment of their own staff, if they relate, relate to sexual harassment, will be treated as though they have always been covered by the Code of Conduct. The committee inquiry uh, identified various barriers to, for people bringing complaints, uh, and it can take uh, time for people to do so. So, in order to address this and deliver the recommendation, a change to the admissibility criteria is required. These criteria normally require a complaint to be made within one year from the date when the complainer could reasonably have become aware of the conduct complained about. If the Commissioner considers that this one-year requirement has not been met, but that the complaint is otherwise admissible, he is obliged under the Act to seek a direction from the Committee, either to dismiss the complaint or treat it as admissible. The Committee views this requirement as a deterrent to anyone considering bringing a complaint about historical misconduct, and the Bill removes that step. This is a good move. Um, dealing with sexual harassment is not just a case of revising policies. About, it is about creating a changing culture where people are treated with dignity and with respect, regardless of who they are. Scottish Labour supports the general principle of the Bill and will vote for it tonight. Thank you very much, Mr Finlay. I now call Alec Cole-Hamilton to open for Liberal Democrats. Mr Cole-Hamilton, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. In this chamber, it falls to all of us to legislate for people as we sometimes find them, not as we would wish them to be. So I welcome this bill, and that goes uh, for MSPs uh, more than most. Um, after all, this parliament is the centre of our democracy, as we've heard uh, from a very good speech there from Neil Finlay. And we should be setting the highest standard and the highest example of good working practice and culture. We must reflect the better natures of the communities that we seek to serve. And sadly, from the results of the staff survey, we have seen that the system currently in this place falls short of that. The sexual harassment and sexist behaviour survey conducted by the Parliament found that a fifth of respondents had experienced harassing behaviour, 30% of women and 6% of men. That is shocking. In 45% of cases, the perpetrator was an MSP, and in 40%, a member of MSP staff. This Parliament must act as a leader for others' employers and public bodies through its refreshed policies for workplace harassment, and this bill is a start in achieving that. This must be joined, though, by the strong responses to sexist and misogynistic voices, as well as promoting measures to advance women equality, women's equality in all arenas. I would like to pick up on one of the committee's particular recommendations uh, to consider an ultimate sanction for MSPs akin to dismissal, dismissal for gross misconduct. I think that sits very much in the same groove as my party's call for a recall procedure in this place as well. Putting something in place for this is certainly challenging, since this job does not come with a conventional interview process. It's uh, not got the same sort of performance appraisal attached to it as most other walks of life. But it's the public who put their trust in us by electing us to this office. However, if we do not manage to conclude uh, this process without a serious professional consequence to match a serious breach of the code of conduct, we will have failed to achieve the goal of the high standard of working culture. And it will just signal that this parliament itself does not take matters of this nature as seriously as it should. Whether it turns out to be suspension or some kind of other mechani mechanism, potentially even recall, the public will expect follow-up to harassment and sexual harassment in the same way we would expect employers in the private or public sectors to do so as well. It's, very worth, it's really worth remembering, presiding officer, that these unwelcome behaviours cover a wide spectrum. Whilst the more serious incidents are thankfully rare, sexism and misogyny 
are far more commonplace, sadly, which is why it was so valuable that the entire workforce of the Parliament was offered the same training on sexual harassment to challenge outdated cultures and to bring forward a culture of healthy respect. I should hope that having taken part in this training, employees and MSPs now feel informed and comfortable enough to call this out when they see it. And this will be an ongoing pro uh, process, not least because in a few months we will have an election. This parliament will rise and there will be many new first time MSPs and many brand new staff as well. This is an iterative process. It is one of continuous improvement and continuous re-education. Whilst this is a challenge, it is also an opportunity to recommit to the high standard of working culture that we would all, all of us, want to see. It is a privilege to work here, an absolute privilege, and we must strive to have full confidence in saying that there is a healthy working culture with an environment where complaints can be followed up and taken seriously. And for that for, uh, reason, my party, the Liberal Democrats, look forward to seeing the progression of this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Gil Patterson to be followed by Margaret Mitchell in the open debate. Many thanks, Presiding Officer. Uh, this bill is an important piece of legislation which will see major changes to the Scottish Parliamentary Standards Commission Act 2002. In that, some of the limitations of the previous legislation will be, will be withdrawn and will be replaced with a much more robust and transparent process. As, a, as society has become more and more aware of the impact of historic sexual harassment, bullying and abuse on, in, uh, on individuals' well-being and how their careers can be damaged. It is absolutely necessary that the Scottish Parliament demonstrate it is in the vanguard of reducing uh, this unequal abuse of power. The retrospective provision of the bill are extremely significant in that the bill makes the point that even if the previous legislation had time-barred a complaint of sexual harassment by an MSP staff member because the complaint had not been raised within a year of the harassment event, this is no longer a reason not to investigate a complaint. In fact, the, the bill enables historic harassment to be investigated by extending the definition, definition of relevant provision. Do not only cover provisions that were enforced at the time, the alleged harassment complaint, but to also include those proposed in the bill. To me, this is a sensible revision because many sexual harassment claims can take years to surface for a variety of reasons. And as some uh, can be seen in the media, uh, uh, intimidation at the time is a real issue for the victims. Removing a time bar uh, for sexual harass harassment and abuse claims is the right thing to do and very much in tune with public sentiment. The clarification that MSP's own staff are included as individuals who must be shown courtesy and respect and not subjected to any, any inappropriate behaviour is, behavior is very welcome. By withdrawing the requirement that a complaint and the withdrawal of a complaint must be signed by the complainant is, is in keeping with a technological practice of electronic communication. So I very much stand behind this uh, bill, uh, presiding officer, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Patterson. I call Margaret Mitchell, who followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Deputy Providing Officer. The Scottish Women's Convention, when giving evidence to the Committee on the Scottish Parliamentary Standards Sexual Harassment and Complaints Process Bill, stated, as the democratic leader within Scotland, the Parliament must take note that whilst many of the work practices within its boundaries are relatively unique, the significant findings of the sexual harassment uncovered within the past few years is conducive of a wider prevalence of sexual harassment within the workforce. Analysis is needed of the power imbalance, the deficiency of equal representation at a parliamentary level, and women's inequality in general, in order to gauge the responses and the lack of such thereof to sexual harassment within the parliament at all levels. This SWG evidence 
followed on from the Scottish Parliament launching a survey to all those who work in the Parliament and including members and their staff. This was in 2017, and the findings revealed. A fifth of respondents said that they had experienced sexual harassment or sexual behaviour while working at the Parliament, and that 40 per cent of respondents said that, in response to sexual harassment or sexist behaviour, um, they had not reported it. Many of the victims of sexual harassment do not report sexual harassment in the workforce when it occurs. The reasons include the imbalance of power dynamic and concerns about the impact of a complaint having on their career prospects. It was for this reason the Joint Working Group in its report recommended there should be no time limit applied to the complaints of sexual harassment. Therefore, the one-year time limit for any complaints regarding a breach of the Code of Conduct, including sexual harassment, will be abolished. This is welcome. However, no time limit introduces retrospectivity and complaints of sexual harassment potentially being brought against former members. I therefore seek some clarification about the legislation intent and possible retrospective consequences, and in particular, how far back a complaint can be made. Does it go back to 1999? Will it include former members now deceased? And was a seven-year time limit in similar Westminster legislation considered and ruled out? I should be grateful if these issues could be considered at stage two if the convener or vice convener is not able to speak to them this evening. In the meantime, Deputy Presiding Officer, I confirm and welcome that the Scottish Conservatives will be voting for the bills and its general principles this evening. Thank you very much, Ms Mitchell. And I call Rona Mackay, last speaker in the open debate. Ms Mackay, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to be able to speak in this debate on the Scottish Parliamentary Standards Sexual Harassment and Complaints Process Bill. It's a very important bill, and I'll be happy to support the general principles of decision time. <laughs> Presiding Officer, in a civilised society, everyone has the right to work and live their life free from abuse, harassment and intimidation. Sexual harassment or abuse of any form, whether in the workplace, home or society, is abhorrent and cannot be tolerated. As MSPs and employers, we must ensure that the highest standards of conduct among elect elected members are upheld, particularly with respect to sexual harassment. We have a duty of care to all employees to create a culture where such behaviour is simply not tolerated and people can come to work to experience a happy and inclusive workplace. It is crucial that when complaints are raised, they are investigated, and there must be a clear pathway to do that. So I am pleased that this Bill's focus is, is on encouraging individuals to raise their concerns with an assurance that such issues will be handled sensitively and discreetly. Presiding officer, we know that sexual harassment is an abuse of power in, in, in all cases. That is why it is essential that staff are protected, as they can often feel intimidated and fear for their job if they come forward, and that is totally unacceptable. One of the most important aspects brought forward in the bill, I believe, is that the committee believes it is in the parliamentary and wider public interest to allow anyone who might have been sexually harassed by a serving or former member to complain with no time bar. That means a complaint can be made and will be investigated whenever the alleged harassment occurred. I welcome this. Time should be no defence. A victim of harassment may feel too traumatised to complain immediately, but there should always be access to justice when they feel strong enough to take a complaint forward. The bill proposes allowing the Commissioner for Ethical Standards and Public Life in Scotland to uh, remove any requirement for the complainer's signature. Again, I think this is a sensitive and sensible proposal. So, in conclusion, presiding officer, I warmly welcome this further strengthening of Scottish parliamentary standards regarding sexual harassment, harassment and complaints, and I'll be happy to support the general principles tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mackay. I now call Lane Smith to close for Labour. Ms. Smith, please. Thank you very much, presiding officer. This has been a positive debate with thoughtful contributions, starting with those of convener. Bill Kidd and uh, obviously going on to the last contribution there as well by Rona Mackay. It is a privilege to serve as an elected MSP and we all know it's a lifestyle, it's a political vacation, it's not a nine to five Monday to Friday job. And although well paid, the hours of work are long, you need commitment and there can be intense pressure, there's no detailed job description 
training or defined employment rights. And of course, members don't stand for election to become employers, and many will have no management experience. But serving as an MSP gives you great job satisfaction in making a difference every day. You're advocating directly for constituents in your own area on a Scotland-wide issue basis or giving a voice to the unemployed, the homeless and the hungry. And with that privilege comes enormous responsibility to your constituents, your colleagues and to staff, including those that you directly employ. And as Alec Cole Hamilton said earlier in the debate, we should be setting the highest of standards. The MSP Code of Conduct was revised in January, as we know, but it did not address complaints about historical misconduct towards MSPs' own staff. That requires legislative change, and that is why the Bill is necessary and welcome. It brings uh, to us towards the completion of a process which started in 2017, as several members have said, following press reports of sexual harassment in the Parliament. And sadly, we know that sexual harassment is a routine part of many people's working lives. A 2016 TUC report on sexual harassment in the workplace confirmed that 52 per cent of women have experienced some form of sexual harassment. And polling in Scotland in 2019 showed almost 40 per cent of workers have witnessed a colleague being sexually harassed, and 68 per cent of those harassed did not report it to their employers. And as we know, the Parliament is not immune to this sort of behaviour, despite our founding principles and efforts to be an exemplary workplace. Uh, Neil Finlay and Margaret Mitchell both said uh, earlier in the debate that a survey by the SPCB found 20 per cent had experienced sexual harassment or sexist behaviour. And when broken down by uh, sex, the vast majority of those were women. Therefore, the Bill is an important step toward creating a zero-tolerance working environment and allowing the Commissioner to investigate complaints of past behaviour, granting some of the rights to MSP staff that have already been given to other Scottish Parliament uh, staff. But let's also remember that sexual harassment is about power, and MSPs are senior figures within this institution, whilst MSP staff can often be regarded as junior members. So within this power imbalance, I would say that women particularly are at more risk of harassment and abuse. Concerns about damage to career prospects or working relations were raised by several respondents in the original SPCB survey, and concerns about complaints not being taken seriously were also raised. Although Parliament has worked to change perceptions, I think we all recognise there is a lot more work to be done to make women, and in some cases, of course, men, feel confident about coming forward. The removal of the admissibility criteria is not only welcome, but it is essential, since some people may not be aware that they have experienced actionable sexual harassment until a much later date, or they have not felt able to make a complaint. And it may also encourage others to come forward where behaviour by a perpetrator has been experienced by multiple people. Section 3 of the Bill to remove the requirement of a signature will facilitate using electric, ele electronic means to both submit and withdraw complaints, and hopefully this will make it easier for people to come forward. However, I do note that complaints must still be made by an individual person with a name and address stated. And the Scottish Women's Convention pointed out in their submission to the consultation that the lack of anonymity within reporting processes continues to act as one of the most significant impediments for women who have experienced sexual harassment. So I don't know if the convener would maybe wish to make some comment on that and if the convener is summing up or the vice deputy convener. Presiding officer, it does take a lot of strength and resolve for any woman to raise a grievance against their boss and even more to follow through with it. So we should do all we can to make that process less difficult. On behalf of Scottish Labour, can I thank the committee for the bill proposal, can I thank the working group for all their work and also everyone who has worked on these issues over a long period, striving to make the Scottish Parliament a zero tolerance workplace and confirm that Scottish Labour will be supporting the general principles this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Smith. I now call on John Scott to close for the Conservatives. Mr Scott, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And as the closing speaker in this Stage 1 debate, Today, it is important to reiterate that Scottish Conservatives welcome this committee bill, the Scottish Parliamentary Standards Sexual Harassment and Complaints Process Bill. For my part, I initially questioned the need for such a bill, but was horrified, like others, including Neil Finlay, to learn that 20 per cent of our staff had experienced sexual harassment or sexist behaviour while working in this parliament, which I take such a pride in. That the further analysis of the Scottish Parliament Sexual Harassment and Sexual Behaviour Survey showed that 30 per cent 
of women and 6% of men experienced behaviour in this form is both staggering and shaming and demanded that our Parliament must act to both protect our women and men, but also our reputation as a Parliament that strives to be an example of best practice, as Jamie Halker Johnston noted. The written submission from the Scottish Women's Convention, January 2020, further highlights the need for action in our institution, in our workplace, and Margaret Mitchell referred to this earlier. So this bill will allow for the investigation of complaints about both current and historic sexual harassment by MSPs towards their staff. Specifically, Section 1 enables the Commissioner to investigate historic complaints alleging sexual harassment by an MSP of their staff, which was previously dealt with under employment law. This section also adds MSP staff to the list of people MSPs must treat with dignity and respect, and this is long overdue, and Bill Kidd, Jamie Halker Johnson and Neil Finlay made reference to this. Section 2 removes the one-year time limit for complaints being made and will make it possible for historic complaints to be brought forward, which date back to the very beginning of this Parliament over 20 years ago. And while the evidence given to the Joint Working Group suggests that there will not be a huge volume of historic complaints brought forward, there may be some complaints brought forward due to these changes. Presiding officer, we all have a duty of care and respect for our staff, and our staff should not need to be laid out in legislation today. But the facts appear to be that members of this place allegedly, but regrettably, have fallen short of an acceptable standard of good behaviour towards their staff, and it is essential and right that this poor behaviour be addressed in this bill today, as Alec Cole Hamilton and others have stated. Section 3 removes the requirement for complaints and withdrawal of complaints to be signed, although, of course, the person making the complaint will need to identify themselves when making the complaint. The purpose of this section is to allow complaints to be made electronically, the expected route being by email, and this to make it easier for complaints to be made to the Commissioner in future. Presiding officer, it's fundament it is a fundamental change in practice that we are proposing today in that this new streamlined complaints procedure for MSP staff will allow them to make complaints directly to the Commissioner for ethical standards in public life instead of having sexual harassment complaints dealt with under employment law, as is currently the case. This change will give MSP staff the same right of complaint as currently held by Parliament staff and in honesty, this should have been the position from the beginning of this Parliament. So in conclusion, the Scottish Conservatives will be unreservedly supporting this bill at stage one today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Scott. And I now call on Graeme Day to close for the Scottish Government. Mr Day, please. Uh, President Officer, uh, in closing, I'd again like to thank the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee for their work on their inquiry into sexual harassment and inappropriate behaviour in the Parliament. Uh, enabling this bill to progress uh, to the point where it has and beyond. This bill will send an important message to ensure that the highest standards of conduct amongst MSPs are upheld and that no individual should be subjected to any form of abuse, particularly in respect to sexual harassment. Um, there have been many fine contributions to this short debate, but I want to focus on one or two. Um, like Jamie Halcrow Johnson, I welcome what he described as the last piece of the jigsaw that was the Commission's recommendations being put in place. This does undoubtedly send a very clear message to staff and just importantly to members about the expectations that staff should have, uh, how they should rightly expect to be treated and how members should be conducting themselves. But Alex Cole Hamilton was also right when he expanded on that point, noting that as well as putting down a marker for those of us currently working here or who have worked in this institution in the past. These proposals send a message to those who will enter the Parliament or might consider seeking employment here post the May election. Appropriate standards of behaviour will be demanded of new MSPs and staff entering this place will do so knowing that if, and one would hope, the deterrent effect of, the, of these and the previously introduced measures would ensure that this would not happen, that they had an unacceptable experience, then they would feel enabled to raise these concerns and have these dealt with properly. As I said, there have been 
many fine contributions uh, to this short debate. But I think John Scott summed things up perfectly for all of us when he described the findings of the survey, which has driven this, as staggering and shaming. They were unacceptable. These measures are necessary. And I look forward to the uh, progress of this bill. Um, at stage two proceedings, presiding officer, it is normal for bills to become the subject of amendment. I think with this one, it's possible that could happen. I suspect, though, it's probably unlikely, because I think we have captured the essence uh, in what we have before us of what requires to be done. But I do agree with other members that there more has to be done going forward. Presiding officer. Thank you very much. I now call Patrick Harvey to close for the committee. Mr Harvey, please. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, this is, as the convener reflected, the last piece of a jigsaw in delivering the recommendations made by the Joint Working Group, whose membership included representatives from all of the political parties. We should expect everyone to support high standards uh, for MSPs and for the experience of their staff members. And this legislation signals that we take the issue of sexual harassment seriously and that there should be no place for it in the Parliament. And I think every member who's spoken today has made similar points on that high expectation that we wish to set and on the right that everyone should have to come to work in an environment that's free of sexual harassment and that where they need to make a complaint that it should be taken seriously and dealt with in a professional manner. Several members, however, including Neil Finlay and John Scott, have also reflected on the reality that this high standard we aspire to is not, in fact, the norm, either in our society or in our parliament. Passing this bill is one more step in taking responsibility for that situation. This bill opens up a complaint route for historical conduct which was previously unavailable to one group of staff, those harassed by their own employing MSP. The committee felt confident in introducing the bill because, of course, it has never been acceptable or indeed lawful for an MSP to sexually harass their own staff. But in cases of this nature, uh, but cases of this nature were previously dealt with through employment grievance procedures. We don't think this is fair, uh, and we agree as a committee with the Joint Working Group that the Parliament should be able to hold members to account for their own behaviour toward their staff in the same way as their behaviour toward other people working in the Parliament. And I think most people would expect Parliament to be able to do so and might be shocked to learn that this gap in the system even existed. The Parliament does aim for a zero-tolerance approach to sexual harassment. Such conduct is, of course, harmful to individuals, but it also, as several members have said, brings the Parliament itself into disrepute. And as such, there is a compelling public interest in bringing these past cases within the Commissioner's remit. It's really unhelpful for there to be such a range of different options for bringing complaints depending on your job role, who harassed you or is accused of doing so, when it happened. That type of clutter and confusion will only inhibit people from coming forward and making a complaint when they feel they need to. So this bill will ensure that there is one coherent approach in relation to these historic complaints. Turning to the proposed provision on the one-year admissibility step for all uh, MSP complaints, the Commissioner is currently obliged to seek a direction from the SPPA committee to investigate any complaints made within one year of the complainant and becoming aware of the conduct. So it's always been possible for complaints of a historic nature to be made, but the change is that the Commissioner will no longer be required to seek a direction before investigating them. This will further ensure the independence of the complaints process. The Parliament's Joint Working Group on Sexual Harassment recommended that this one-year hurdle be removed. It said there should be no time limit applied to the complaints uh, to complaints of sexual harassment. Each complaint should be dealt with on its own merits. And how far back the allegations go, whether it was a one-off incident or, or whether the behaviour has recurred, can all be taken into account during the investigation 
to determine whether there's a case to answer. And the Joint Working Group also said, if our aim is to create a culture where people feel more confident to report, we believe it would be counterproductive to set a time limit on making such complaints. Presiding officer, the Parliament and the political parties have all signed up to that joint working group recommendation. This bill puts everyone on the same footing when it comes to complaints of this nature. There should not be different processes for different cases. And a Parliament, our Parliament, should be able to hold its members to account for conduct that falls short of that required of elected members and fall short of that standard, which is clear from today's debate, we all wish to set. This bill will allow the Parliament to learn lessons, apply the sanction if it sees fit. So I'll close by reiterating the convener's remarks in his opening speech that this proposed bill is the culmination of a series of measures designed to ensure that the highest standards of conduct among MSPs are upheld with respect to sexual harassment. And I am pleased to have the opportunity to close the debate on behalf of the committee and invite Parliament to agree to the bill's general principles when we reach decision time. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, Mr Harvey. That concludes the Stage 1 debate on Scottish Parliamentary Standards Sexual Harassment Complaints Process Bill. And as we're a little bit ahead of the time, I suspend this meeting till 16.50.
you, colleagues. I'm going to um, call the to order and resume uh, parliamentary business. Uh, we've got a, a minute to decision time, but a number of items to go through. So the next item is consideration of business motion 23731 in the name of Graeme Day on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a revision to tomorrow's business. Could I call on the Minister to move this motion? Move, President Officer. Thank you. No member has indicated they wish to speak on this motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 23731 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next item is consideration of business motion 23708 in the name of Graeme Day, also setting out a business programme. Could I call on Graeme Day to move this motion? Move, President Officer. Thank you very much. Could I... No members indicated there was to speak. Therefore, the question is that motion 23708 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next item is consideration of 11 parliamentary bureau motions. Could I call on the Minister on behalf of the Bureau to move motions 23709 to 23716 on approval of SSIs, 23717 on committee membership, 23732 on suspension of standing orders, and 23734 on committee meeting times? Move, President Officer. Thank you very much. And the questions on those motions will be put at decision time, uh, to which we now come. Now, as the uh, presenting officer and the chair said earlier, I will call the vote from yesterday on the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Bill Financial Resolution first. And I'll then move on to the votes on today's business. So the first question is that motion 23531 in the name of Kate Forbes on the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Bill Financial Resolution be agreed? Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We're going to move to a division. We're going to suspend Parliament for a few moments just to allow members both here in the Chamber and online to access the voting app. So Parliament is suspended for a few moments to allow broadcasting to switch off.
Thank you, colleagues. We are now back in session, and we're going to go straight to the vote. The question is that Amendment 23531, in the name of Kate Forbes, on the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Bill Financial Resolution be agreed, and members may press their buttons now. This is a one-minute division. Thank you. That vote is now closed. We'll just give a few moments for any members who believe they have not been able to vote to let me know through a point of order, and then we'll declare the result. Thank you. The result of the vote on motion 23531 in the name of Kate Forbes is yes, 84, no, 29. There were no abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. The second question this evening is that motion 23672 in the name of Bill Kidd on the Scottish Parliamentary Standards Sexual Harassment and Complaints Process Bill at Stage 1 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I propose to ask a single question on nine of the parliamentary bureau motions. On nine of the parliamentary bureau motions, does any member object? No. No member has objected. Therefore, the question is that motions 23709 to 23717, in the name of Graeme Day, on behalf of the parliamentary bureau, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next question is that motion 23732, in the name of Graeme Day, on suspension of standing orders, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the final question is that motion 23734, in the name of Graeme Day, on committee meeting times, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed, and that concludes decision time. We're going to move shortly to a member's business debate in the name of Sarah Boyack on interlinked fire and smoke alarm systems. But we'll just take a few moments for members uh, who wish to leave the chamber to do so. Please observe social distancing rules, wear your face masks, and follow the one-way systems in place around the parliament. Thank you.